Hello, this is Monsignor John Kasha from St. Teresa of Lisieux Parish in Shelby Township, and we're celebrating the fifth Sunday of Lent. As is our tradition here at St. Therese, we have a prayer that we say that was written by St. Therese, and so I want to pray this. Uh, we've been asking our parishioners to pray it uh, 9 o'clock, 12 noon, and 6 p.m. daily uh, for the end of the coronavirus. And so I'll pray this out loud, and then we'll begin our, our Mass. O oh, glorious St. Therese, whom Almighty God has raised up to aid and inspire the human family, our parish community implores your miraculous intercession. You are so powerful in obtaining every need of body and spirit from the heart of God. Holy Mother Church proclaims you the prodigy of miracles, the greatest saint of modern times. We fervently beseech you to heal us from illness and fear, and to carry out the promises of spending heaven doing good on earth, of letting fall from heaven a shower of roses. Little flower, give us your childlike faith to see the face of God in people and experiences around us, and to love God with full confidence. St. Therese, our parish patron, we will fulfill your plea to be made known everywhere and will continue to lead others to Jesus through you. Amen. Thank you. 
one of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, for you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give you life to your mortal bodies also, through his Spirit dwelling in you. The Word of the Lord. So the Jews said, how he loved him. And some of them said, could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, 
I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. As we gather this fifth Sunday event, we have just a couple of more days before we begin celebrating the great feast of Holy Week and, of course, Easter. This particular gospel reading is quite significant because it shows Jesus raising someone from the dead. In other gospel passages, the person that Jesus raises from the dead has only been dead a short time. Lazarus has been dead for four days. And so this really shows that Jesus was Lord not only of life, but Lord over death. And this particular gospel has a, has a special significance for me because uh, last year I went down to, to the Holy Land, to Israel, and we saw the place that they revere as Lazarus' tomb. Now imagine, if you will, a small opening, probably a little bit larger than this ambo. And as you go into this cave-like structure, you start walking down steps, which are very slippery, and they're very narrow. And you go down and it kind of turns, and you end up in a large room, which is maybe, I don't know, six or eight feet square. Now imagine carrying a dead body, so you have one person at the front, one person at the, at the back, carrying down this narrow passageway, twisting and everything else, getting the body down there, and then having to climb back out. Now the way they bury it back in those days is they would actually wrap the body with a lot of cloth and almost mummifying them. And they had a cloth over the face. So I'm going to try to demonstrate this. So imagine you know, when Jesus tells Lazarus to come out, he's bound hand and foot and he's walking like this. And then Jesus says, untie him, let him go. This particular passage really reminds us that we are called to assist the Lord in raising people back to life. I'd like to give an example. So many people that we know uh, suffer from addictions of various kinds. So many people we know struggle with financial difficulty, maybe mental illness. Maybe some people have done something wrong in the eyes of the law and they serve time. And so they've been put into a grave, into a tomb. And when they've done their rehabilitation, when they've been healed, they are called out of that and they're invited to be back in society once again. But notice what Jesus says in the Gospel. He says, you know, Unbind him. Let him go. Jesus wants the community to participate in Lazarus's rehabilitation. Lazarus is coming back to life. What that means for us 2,000 years later is that Jesus wants us to assist with someone's coming back to life. If they've been dead because of addiction, because of sin, because of illness, because of financial difficulty. We're called to assist them in being reintegrated into society. Now, how do we do that? How do we help someone? 
Well, if someone has an addiction to drugs, alcohol, sex, whatever, when they're going through the rehabilitation process, a 12-step program, we encourage them. We say, you know, good job. I'm glad you're making a difference. I'm glad you're changing things. You don't keep on bringing up the past. Remember when you were drunk and you did da 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 da? Remember when you were a meth head? Remember when you were over there visiting all those porn sites and keep on bringing up the past? That doesn't help in their rehabilitation. That doesn't help in their being restored. That keeps them in the past. We have to help them let it go. Yes, you learn from the past, but you move forward. If someone has been in prison and they come back and they're trying to get back on their feet, you don't constantly remind them of the times when they're, you know, oh, well, you're a convict, you're an ex-con. You know, you'll never make anything of yourself. No. How can I help you to get better? How can I help you become rehabilitated? We have to learn to let it go. And there's that song from, from Disney's Frozen. I'm not going to sing it because people are, you know, they're all going to laugh. And I don't look like Elsa or Elsa, whatever her name was. But the fact is that we're called to, you know, learn to say, let it go. Let the past go. Yes, learn from it, but then move forward. We don't know how long Lazarus lived after this. Legend has it that he lived a long, a long life, and then he died, and he's revered, uh, the three of them, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, are revered as saints in the church. Of course, the Jewish people didn't like the fact that Lazarus was raised from the dead, because it showed Jesus' power. Sometimes we don't like it, when someone is raised from the dead, when they get out of their addictive cycle, when they get out of prison. We want to keep them bound up. We want to keep them in their tombs. It's more convenient. It would have been very convenient if Lazarus stayed dead. But God is not a God of convenience. God shocks us into reality and challenges us. During this coronavirus, it's an opportunity for us to really get closer to the Lord. And what are we learning from this experience? What are we learning about ourselves, about our neighbors, about our families? Perhaps we're learning that we each have gifts and talents. Maybe we're learning that we actually drive each other crazy. Maybe we're learning that we're not called to always get involved in people's business. Maybe we're learning that life is not always convenient. But hopefully, this experience is teaching us to love each other better. I'm sure that Martha and Mary loved their brother Lazarus even more after he was raised from the dead. They spent more time together as a family. They knew what they lost and how it was restored. Maybe this coronavirus is an opportunity for us to really recognize what's truly important in our lives, what's truly helping us to become the people God has called us to be. So when we get through this, this tomb of corona, maybe we can be freed to love better, to forgive more often, to be people who are more pleasant to one another, and to recognize that God has been with us on this journey the whole time. The fact is we have to believe what Martha really said in today's gospel. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. If we truly believe that, Nothing, no thing, will separate us from God's love. So for this fifth week of Lent, ask yourself, what has bound you up? What has caused you to be in a tomb? Ask the Lord to raise you up from that. 
and ask the Lord to help those around you to also let you go so that you may become free in Jesus Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was an heart of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge us living in the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We offer to God all of our needs and petitions. <coughs>
grant to through your Son, Jesus the Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
For when about to give his life to set us free, as we find in supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice, a blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
into the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Palm Sunday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and Easter Sunday. Even though you cannot participate with us physically, I hope that you continue to participate by watching us on various multimedia. Uh, during this week of Lent, this fifth week of Lent, I encourage you to also uh, continue to pray for those who are working on the front lines, doctors, nurses, medical professionals, uh, medical researchers, uh, first responders, that God may keep them safe. Uh, we're told that the peak of the coronavirus is approaching its apex, so uh, hopefully it will be, be on the downswing. But uh, do keep safe. Uh, make sure you follow the directions of the various civil authorities regarding what we should be doing. Here at St. Therese, we do um, offer services. If you call and need something, please do call us. Um, we will try to accommodate as best we're able. Um, but we do encourage you to stay at home and make sure that you participate in various activities from afar, social distance. And uh, take time during this uh, last few days of Lent to really intensify your prayer. Spend time in prayer with the Lord. Spend time in meditation. <clears throat> Offer uh, yourself this time of sacrifice. Offer it for those who are suffering in the world. It takes some time to, to really uh, align yourself more closely with the Lord. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks. Amen. Amen. Amen.